Hi, my name is Dr. Kevin Martin. I'm an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon from The Ohio State University. In dealing with these high ankle sprains in athletes, we first begin by looking at the high ankle sprain with a nano. We identify the torn ligaments and we identify the instability. After that, we reduce it anatomically and start with our XP stabilization with a tightrope. We then work our way distally, and then we augment with the internal brace across the front of the AITFL, giving us two points of fixation and getting our athletes back on the field sooner. All right, so the first thing we do when we start to diagnose our athletes with a high ankle sprain is we perform a diagnostic arthroscopy. I utilize uh, Nano, and we can be able to look around inside the ankle and clearly visualize the anatomic structures. Coming over here to the syndesmosis, we use a small joint probe, and we're able to evaluate the fibula here, distal tibia, and of course the talus here. We start to see in this patient that the AITFL is attenuated, it's torn here and up here. So this would back up our diagnostic examination. We could also do a fibular translation test where we try to translate the fibula anterior to posteriorly. And we can also stick a small probe into our syndesmosis here and truly do a good diagnostic examination and see if our ankle is unstable to a dynamic examination. All right, so now the next most important part is we switch portals and we do a direct visualization into the syndesmosis. We can see our talus on the left side of the screen, our tibia on the top and our fibula. And so what we wanna do is restore and evaluate the Mercedes sign. This is an anatomic reduction of the syndesmosis and this really allows our surgeons to be able to look and evaluate if the syndesmosis is truly reduced. This is the view that needs to be uh, visualized and identified before and after the reconstruction is done. And it doesn't get much better than that. Nanovision straightforward viewing allows you to look directly into the syndesmosis without any obstructed viewing. Okay, once we have our diagnostic arthroscopy complete, we use fluoro to identify where we feel the tightrope should be placed, proximal to the joint line, but yet within the incisura. So we place our guide wire, make a small percutaneous incision, and that's how we get our athletes back so much faster, by just doing a very small percutaneous incision. And then under fluoroscopic guidance, we'll take our Arthrex Synergy system and we'll drive this wire across the syndesmosis and out, dropping our hand approximately 30 degrees to get the proper angle. All right, so now we're gonna use our new Synergy power system to drill across the syndesmosis. It follows the guide wire very nicely across four cortices. You wanna make sure you feel that nice pop along that medial cortex, but not to plunge through the periosteum. You wanna keep that periosteum intact to act as a trampoline to stop our tightrope button. Now that we've drilled, we'll take our Arthrex XP and we'll have the red button facing us. We'll pull our guide wire out and follow directly behind it with the button. And we go through, we'll just have a gentle rotation, not too much, and we'll slide it across. When you can feel it on your other contralateral side, you can take a small fluoro shot and ensure that you're through. Feel it, then take our red tab. We'll pull our red tab off and we'll pull back on our button. This releases the button immediately. And then we can see our fluoroscopic change as well. So now we've demonstrated that the button is disengaged and along the far cortex. At this point, our handle can be removed. And then we'll take and we'll slowly pull down. Sometimes I manipulate the soft tissue on the inside of the ankle. Pulling it, you can feel the button slide down nicely as you add tension across. And then we've laid the button directly on the cortex. Very nice. Now, looking laterally, the way we can do this, we pull and we slide the button down. And what I like to do is slide it down first like this and hold it. As we slide this down, what that does, it prevents any looping or tangles along the suture. So we slide this down very nicely like that. And what we do is now we pull them side to side evenly, ensuring there's no loops or tangles, back and forth very slowly, making sure that you pull the same angle you drilled and, and we'll secure that button directly on the cortex. Okay, so after we've pulled our button down under the skin, we then attach our blue handles. Attaching the blue handles relatively close allows you a better control. And then we sequentially tighten them one at a time and we pull in the same direction we drilled. So we pull, you can feel some of that creep come out of the sutures and we simply switch to the other one. And again, pull in the same inline direction. You can really feel the tensioning coming out of the system. You can really feel that uh, knot snugging down. And we go back and forth until we feel we've got enough. I leave these on and then at that point I can repeat my stress examination to evaluate the syndesmosis if you need to apply a little bit more tension, but usually that's enough. All right, so after the tightrope is placed, we then repeat our examination again, repeat a dynamic stress examination. And for our hard, higher demand athletes, what we're gonna do is a second point of fixation because these higher demand athletes require that. So I'm looking at the syndesmosis and I'm looking at the AITFL insertion on the fibula here and it's insertion up here on the distal tibia. So what we're gonna do is reconstruct the AITFL using internal brace.
Okay, now we'll directly visualize the insertion of the AITFL on the distal tibia. We'll take Nano, we'll pull back, we'll visualize the footprint, and we'll drive right into the footprint and secure it to the distal tibia. And then what we can do is we can pull back gently and we can actually look through Nano and ensure that that footprint's right where we want it. And so once we get that, we like our angle, we can change it, we can confirm under fluoroscopy, and we can pull that back. And it's important to hold that same angle. And now your guide wire that comes in the IB kit will go straight down that sheath and we can advance it under power, all arthroscopic. Now we can pull that out. Very safe, you've protected the superficial perineal nerve completely during that whole procedure. So it's for safekeeping. And then we can come back in and we can visualize the guide wire's placement and confirm its position. All right, once the guide wire is in place, I then put the drill guide directly over our, our wire. Again, we're protecting the superficial perineal nerve and we slide it down our guide wire and then press it, press it directly onto the cortical surface. Once we have it in place and we confirmed arthroscopically, we can now drill with our cannulated drill bit. Again, safety is paramount here by protecting the superficial perineal nerve and doing it all under direct arthroscopic visualization. As we drill, it has a hard stop, so we'll drill until our hard stop, and then we're done. So now what we've done, we've drilled, we've got our drill guide in there still, and now we'll slide our cannulated uh, tap directly down our guide wire, and we can tap all arthroscopically. All right, so now you take the tap all the way down the guide wire. It comes with a nice black line right here. You can tap and you can watch the black line come right down to where you want it to be. And that way, again, arthroscopically, you can see exactly how far you want to tap. It's usually right about there. And there we go. Now we've drilled and tapped all with our cannulated system. And the tap simply comes out and the guide wire will come out with it too at this point. There you go. If you want to confirm, you can change portals and we can look directly into our, this is where the beautiful component of Nano, if you want to confirm your placement, you can actually see the threads we've now cut with the fine detail that Nano can provide. Sometimes we use a little SJ50 and we can take the little RF and we can actually prepare the uh, point of the fibula, right where we're going to put our tunnel and where we're going to put our anchor. That just allows for better visualization and really preps the bone to prevent any soft tissue bridging you may have. We can place Nano back in their anterior lateral portal and visualize that footprint completely. Again, taking Nano and pushing it directly into the fibula. Pull back, we can directly visualize. We have nice uh, bony opposition. If you still want to adjust it, you can still place your camera back in. You can verify, there's the uh, Mercedes sign. We come right over to the fibula, that spot we prepared already with our RF ablator. And now we can hold it, we can pull Nano out. Again, confirming our view. And then use Nano as a drill guide and allows perfect arthroscopic targeted screw placement. Now you can confirm that you have a direct anatomic location of your guide wire directly on the fibula at the footprint of the AITFL. We can then slide our drill guide directly down onto the fibula and confirm position. And once we're down on the bone, we then can drill with our cannulated drill bit. And it's got a hard stop, so we'll go until it stops. Excellent, good job. All right, and we don't need to tap down here. So we are confirmed and we like our placement, okay. All right, now that we have drilled and tapped all arthroscopically, we then take our 4.75 millimeter swivel lock with the internal brace already loaded, and we can directly place it into the hole we've already drilled and tapped, and we'll place this in. We'll give it a few gentle mallets to get the anchor down. Now we'll hold the square and turn the pair, and we can directly visualize that anchor going in. Again, Nano gives you a beautiful view of that going right in. Excellent. Now we can stop there, and we can unload the anchor. All right, we can back this off if we want to confirm our placement. And we can see here that the anchor is in. We can give it a couple more turns. We have plenty of space in the distal tibia. And then we can simply remove our device. Prior to placing the 3.5 millimeter anchor, you can then take a small probe if you'd like to, to ensure you have the right trajectory and kind of get the feel of where your anchor is going to go. And you can also spin this and confirm you have good osseous opposition around the whole anchor in case you're concerned that you may have missed the fibula or don't have it center center. Now we'll take our 3.5 millimeter anchor and walk it over to our, our uh, hole we've drilled. And now we'll gently mount it into position. Go ahead. Once we get the anchor just barely seated, we then hold the square and turn the pair. And again, we can watch the anchor go in under direct arthroscopic visualization. Gives that nice squeak, giving us good confirmation. We have a very nice fixation. And again, it's a beautiful visualization. Right down that beautiful arthrex squeak we all love. Then we can back off our, our entry guide, 
and really confirm that we have nice placement here of our anchor. A couple more turns to make sure it's recessed and then pull it out. Once we have that out, we can then switch and visualize. And now we can confirm our placement of our 475 in the distal tibia. We can confirm our 3.5 millimeter in our fibula. And then what we really like to do is get a dynamic examination. So really take the ankle through a range of motion, really confirm that you have the Mercedes sign and look at that syndesmosis now. We can see it's closed down, we're anatomic. We can really see that Mercedes sign right there. Now we have two points of fixation, all arthroscopic and very anatomic. We could put our anchor a little bit more proximal here if you'd like. Uh, regardless though, you get the idea. Uh, and we get two points of fixation through three small incisions. Again, giving our bigger athletes and more higher demand athletes an ability to get back on the field sooner with two points of fixation. Okay, we can then slide down an arthroscopic cutter right above our knot and cut and release. And then change portals once again and allows you to directly visualize the repair we just completed. Beautiful. You can see our distal fibula here, distal tibia here. Now we have an anatomic reconstruction and we can see our syndesmosis right here is completely restored. We have that good Mercedes sign right there. And we do a dynamic examination ensuring that it's stable. We can do a dorsiflexion external rotation stress test here as well. So now we have two points of fixation. The internal brace was placed proximal to center in the incisura, and our second is placed anatomically to reconstruct and augment the AITFL.